introduction to cloud computing and Microsoft Azure. And this will be a crash course on the basics of cloud. Uh, how do we use the cloud platform and understand what are the components of cloud? We will first cover what is the real cloud, what do the cloud components mean, understanding the theory behind cloud, uh, what what were we doing without the cloud? What was the real thing uh, which made we uh, we need to use the cloud, etc. Once we settle on those platforms, jargons, and clear the terminologies, we will take a step into look at what is Azure. Uh, with this, let's get started. Uh, these are roughly the topics which will be being covered. Uh, this is just a few pointers, but I will go deeper into the points even which are not part of this. Okay. For example, if you need to do multiplication, you need to addition. That doesn't mean that uh, when somebody teaches you multiplication, they won't teach addition, etc. These are the points. There are many uh, subordinate uh, topics which will be covered inside this. Okay. Okay. What is cloud computing? Uh, cloud computing uh, is not something new. Uh, cloud computing existed. The idea of cloud computing existed for a very long time. Uh, you don't, you won't believe the first idea, or the first paper about the cloud was uh, late 1960s and 70s when not even the first Unix operating system, got, the first operating system was not written. The first operating system was written only way in 1969, 1970. But the idea of cloud, uh, the idea of sharing, the idea of uh, giving the resource uh, for a specific point of time was very, uh, had been long time. But uh, the real need, the real push for cloud only came definitely uh, before some two, three years ago, a maximum five years ago. Before that, what happened? Uh, although the cloud became very, very, the idea of cloud came very early, the cloud adoption came early now. Uh, there are several factors which made cloud required at this age and which made cloud available at this point in time. Okay. Um, for now, you could understand by the analogy of a prepaid and a postpaid mobile. Prepaid mobile, what do you do? You take a mobile operator, you pay a 300 rupees or 400 rupees, and you get back the gas, which means you're going to pay the amount prior to your usage. Say you're going to talk for 100 minutes. If you pay 200 rupees, you get 400 minutes. You're going to pay 200 rupees ahead and get back the uh, services which you, will, which you may use in the near future. You are paying upfront. Whereas what happens in the postpaid, you will be used only based on how much you use. Uh, please uh, don't dig into uh, the thing of uh, what is the add-ons, the top of service tax, etc. This is just an idea to understand how the real cloud is. Okay? Um, uh, let's take the prepaid idea. In prepaid, what happens? Uh, you top up for 500 rupees and you get the validity for one month. Although you use that 500 rupees or not, irrespective of that, if you don't, uh, the 500 rupees is being charged. If you don't use the, the entire 500 uh, and you use it for only 200 rupees, the remaining 300 rupees is waste and uh, which, uh, which is a real, which could be a little bit of a problem. But whereas in postpaid mobile, uh, speaking of the strict postpaid, okay, uh, you you will be able to use if you speak for 200 rupees, pay for 200 rupees, speak for 500 rupees, speak for, uh, pay for 500 rupees. So, this is the difference between a prepaid and a postpaid. Now, taking the same idea to the computers and computers, okay? What happens? Traditionally, people run the uh, servers on premise or take a server from a hosting provider. Uh, let's say you have a website, an ASP.NET website, okay? You need a Windows Server box, box as in the hardware, uh, which has installation of Windows Server 2008 or Windows 8 2008 or, or Windows Server 2008, whatever may be the operating system. As it is an ASP.NET website, it requires IIS to be run, and you will install IIS over there. So, uh, for your website, you will first buy the hardware, install Windows Server on it, and then install IAS, inter Internet Information Services, or, uh, or the web server, the default web server for your ASP.NET, install that. And over that, you set up your website. Once you set up that website, you need an IP. You will connect it to a public IP, and then my name mapping or matching to your IP to your website, say, my website.com, something like that, 
and when somebody from the anywhere in the world is connected to the internet by anywhere in the world in the www.mygoogleswit.com the request comes to you right and the page the content is being dispatched from your system this is the traditional way of loading your hardware to set up your application okay uh same thing what happens is um when you for a hosting provider what happens uh the hosting provider you do the same work except that you don't own the hardware uh they will take care of the entire hardware setting up network ban with latency check etc everything will be everything will be fine uh anket uh, i see you are not receiving good audio uh, what about other yeah. narsima can you check But is that fine for you, Narsimha? Narsimha, is that fine for you? you uh, are you able to hear my voice clearly? Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. no. Still not. It's low voice. It's low voice. Uh, just a second. Ah. I will connect it via my phone in that case. Just a minute. Ah, uh, yeah. We were talking about uh, post-paid plan, pre-paid plan, and uh, taking that analogy, equating to how do you set up your own website? Ah, uh, yeah, just. A uh taking your website use your own um uh use your own hardware to serve as website uh you will go to hosting provider on the cases of buying the hardware maintaining them running them all those things will cause a lot of problem so you go to a hosting provider what a hosting provider will take care of she will take care of everything except your application maintaining them etc uh the problems uh when you run your own hardware is you need to take care of the real hardware that is power cooling network uh, in case of any failure with the hard disk the network failure the network adapter fail the operating system crash there are a lot of problems like this all these problems will be taken care by the hosting provider you just need to put your application and make yourself running uh in the both the examples of uh hosting providers as well as your own hardware what is happening um you will still be paying up front you will pay your money and get the hardware and operating system in a package so you will be paying in ahead of what you will you know, what you may use later same thing with the hosting provider uh the hosting provider will charge based for for a six month time for a three month time for one year time and you will be paying him up front and be taking his services these are the two ways in which the entire traditional or the uh, computing and the computing network uh, the computing infrastructures were run for uh, nearly uh, for nearly three or four decades and now with the advent of cloud there are a lot of changes to the game of how you will host your application how will you run your application um the point of me telling about um you will be buying the hardware you will be installing operating systems all those will be little bit of counter intuitive reason uh, say you are going to start your own organization what will you do you come up with an idea you talk to an venture capitalist and venture capitalist will give you a so and so amount for example you talk to an venture capitalist and he pays you 5 lakhs to make your application up and running in one year time so you have the idea you start building application you your uh, uh, the best idea ever application uh, or the next facebook or whatever is it using an asp as you mean asp.net website so your application will be ready for you to test for you to test it in the uh, production scenario or the staging setup of how things are going what you need to do uh, you will be requiring to buy a server servers will cost nearly around 30000 to 40000 this the i'm talking about the mid range or the entry range or the basic one 30000 to 40000 so with the 30000 to 40000 you got the hardware and then you will require softwares and other patches to be installed that might cost around 20000 and you will be uh, required to get an ip uh, your uh, your application your bandwidth your uh, dns all those things will work out around 1 lakh you have not even started your application and you have not seen whether the application goes on real well in the production or not 
all those things are there. E, although all the none of your none of your components which were developed is not going to production, you have already finished off 20% if you are not. In 5 lakhs you would be lost 1 lakh and re the remaining 4 lakh you need to push it for the next next uh, till the next big launch or the next rate hike. These are the problems where you end up locking up amount. You have not even started making money out of it, but you have locked nearly around 20% of your capital. This is a simple example of how one can get locked. So this is the hardware. But you still would say that buying uh, your own hardware might cost 1 lakh rupees, but making using making use of a hosting provider will be 50,000 or 60,000 only. It will be much cheaper than running your own hardware. Yes, accepted. Even 50,000 or 60,000 is what it is being lost. So uh, let's say you, have, you lost, uh, you have spent nearly, uh, it's not actually law, it is more of an investment kind of a thing. You have invested 50,000 rupees in the hosting provider. What had happened, uh, you have, instead of the 20% being locked up, you have locked up 10%. That is the only difference which it makes. But still, end result is all the same. Money getting locked up in the early phases of the software development is really, really painful and really, really hard to get out of that. Stay from the cloud. I will not explain cloud at even in this stage. Let's get, uh, let's see what really happened. Uh, the story I have narrated so far, let's keep it aside and let's see, okay? Uh, I told about the post -pay. I told about how things get, how your infrastructure or the um, budget gets locked up. Keep it aside for some time and I will introduce cloud. Uh, so far everything good, guys? Uh, if you have any queries, uh, uh, anything, just put it in the chat window, either publicly or either privately. Anket, Priyank, Shubha, Shubhakar and Gilburn. Okay, uh, the majority of the, okay, that's great. It's clear, okay? Okay, moving on. Um, the concept of cloud computing is based on service. You will buy hardware, okay? You will buy prepaid plan, but you will use postpaid service. Service is different from uh, the product that is the in the overall business irrespective of whatever people do there are only two kinds of business one is uh, service companies and other is manufacturing companies right manufacturing is something you get something a real uh, you get a value you define a value to it whereas in service you get things done by the service okay the same thing is here uh, when you use clouds uh, uh, there is a very little difference in this stage for cloud and hosting provider, okay? Uh, you buy a hardware, but you harness the service for the cloud or the infrastructure. Meaning, uh, the, assuming there are only two ways, you buy your own hardware or you use the cloud. Just forget hosting for a little bit, after, for, for some time, okay? You will buy server or you will use the cloud server as a service for one hour. You will use the cloud service for 10 hours. You will use it for 5 days, etc. This is how you will be using. Everything is pay as you go. The other cloud term for postpaid. That's it. Pay as you go is as and when you want high computing infrastructure, you will use it. You assuming you have 5 websites. Okay. Uh, you just need them for 12 noon to 3 p.m. every day. Not five websites. You just have one website. You just need it for three hours a day from 12 noon to 3 p.m. Exactly. Uh, the whatever is it. Uh, God knows why uh, a website should be up and running only from 12 to 3. But there are other services. Okay. Uh, in this case, if you buy your own server and install it, irrespective of whether it is running from 12 at 12 noon to 3 p.m., that is any three hours, uh, it, you will still be having the server in your place. Whereas in cloud, what happens, 
you will be just paying for the three hours. Say it is one dollar per hour, you will be just paying three dollars per day. And for per month, three dollars into 30 days. That's it. That's how you will be paying. And tomorrow, instead of rate running from three hours, you need for six hours. On Mondays, you need three hours. On Tuesdays, you need six hours. And rest is on three hours. You don't need to do anything. You just keep your site running in the cloud. For three hours, you pay it for $3 on Monday. You run it for six hours and pay $6 on Tuesday. And as of, uh, and this goes on. How much ever you want, you will, you will just use what you need. And you will just pay what you used. That's it. Okay. Uh, at the end of the day, there will be a monthly billing of what are the things consumed. You use this much of bandwidth from cloud. You, you, you ran this many servers for this many hours. And each server, one was large, one was extra large, one was small, one was extra small, etc. All those things will be consolidated and you will be given the bill. Okay? You will be just paying. Actually, the bill comes later, and even during the subscription, even before the subscription, what happens is that when you first need to get the service from cloud, from the Microsoft Azure, you will fill in your personal details. You will uh, then put your credit card. Okay? You will put your credit card credentials to your cloud account, and all the transactions you do from then on will reflect on your credit card statement. Or you will get every, uh, you will get the detailed scenario of what are the things done and how um, how many servers being used. Everything will be here, but it requires a credit card. The entire cloud means credit card. When people say something about credit card, you will immediately, uh, something about cloud, you just immediately need credit card. Okay? Guys, good so far? Okay, uh, using computing resources as a service-based usage is what I told, and building high scalable and highly available architecture using cloud. Uh, say, um, um, your payroll processing will run once a month every day. W once a month, every, uh, once a month. That is, uh, it runs uh, once every month or every calendar month. And rest of the time, it is all, uh, it will be mostly idle. And there is a whole, uh, people, uh, um, why don't you get salaries based on day? Why do you always get based on month? Any idea about that? It's the same thing. That is, why do you get it based on the month? Why not day? Uh, to give back the answer, uh, you need to take the example of what happened in 1960s and 1950s when by the great... Uh, for the great GEs, all those people were from USA. And it seems that uh, um, um, calculation of the payroll will take one month time. That's why they were paying salaries every month. So if they need to calculate salaries every day, you will get today's salary only after one month. So uh, the calculations, their company size, their employee size are so big and there are so many calculations and so many variables that need to be involved. And that requires, that requires 30 days. And they, that, they followed the standard month of, uh, standard time duration of 30 days slash one month. That became the calendar month. And that's why they took it. Uh, that's why they, uh, that's how it became the standard. And uh, here, let's say you have your entire setup, your entire applications being set up and it is up and running. And your payroll, required to be run only a month. And you will use, instead of using a small machine, you will use an extra large machines with a very, very high CPU, very high memory, and very high storage, and you use it to crunch data, like left, right, and center. Uh, so what you can do, you can exactly say, you will be paying your salaries on third, or four, uh, let's say you will be paying your salaries to your employees on fifth. You can run that 
uh, payroll processing cloud server exactly on day three for 12 hours or 18 hours or 20 hours and then turn it on. So assuming extra large incense will require nearly around 96 cents, roughly around one dollar, you will just be paying for twenty dollars if it had run for twenty hours, twenty dollars a month, and you can leave it off. You can switch switch it off, and the data will be back. All your data is being processed, and all your um, all your problems, all your infrastructure, you don't need to worry about things. All of your needs are being saved. And this is what I told about building high scalable and high available architecture. I told about. Um, I have not spoken about high scalable and high available. Enabling automatic increase is also I have not discussed about this. Using the computing resource as service based usage. I told about the time and I told about the computing power. You don't require the payroll process on 15th or 16th. You only require on 3rd. And during that time you will be using that server. Right? Um, the rest of the time you could just use a small instance for nearly around 20 cents an hour and only for the payroll processing you could use one dollar an hour and uh, all your needs will be done. Okay. Uh, for doing this you don't need to tell Microsoft hello boss I need uh, a server uh, just uh, allocate me I may be requiring at any point in time and Microsoft won't say give me some time I need nothing it's everything is instantaneous they are running millions of servers, literally millions of servers in USA, in Singapore, in Hong Kong, in Ireland, etc. You just need to put your credit card, go access the portal, put your application, run, commence the data and you will then push the data to somewhere in your database or your local storage or somewhere and everything is, is being done. This is the uh, uh, smallest or the simplest uh, simplest advantage of the several advantage you get it from the cloud. This is one of the really <coughs> simplest or the smallest example. Uh, assume what, what what kind of opportunities you get. Uh, you don't need to worry about anything. You need an extra high powerful server for a day. Just use it for a day. Just pay twenty four dollars. Finish. And you don't need to worry about what happens to the server next and what will, you don't need to, uh, um, just for a day, uh, I, do, I require an extra power processor, extra powerful server, it will be very, very costly. It will work out nearly around 3000 to $3,500 for spending, for buying that, buying that server. Instead, you just pay $24, where is $3,500 and where is $24? So, that is the, um, uh, that is the impact what cloud is making on the businesses today. This is in terms of resource consumption for a particular time. Okay. Uh, let me bring up a uh, note. Okay. Um, let me take an example of university. Okay. I think I have a slide for this. Why go to cloud? Ah, okay. Let me explain this with a scenario. Okay. Example, you will take a university. University publishes results. And this results will be once in six months. Right? And uh, rest of the time, I don't get, I guess people don't even care to bother what's really going in that university websites apart from the symposiums or apart from the syllabus or etc. I mean, uh, the university side gets huge traction only during the time of results, right? During the results, huge, huge traffic, okay? What really happens? Slow side, frustration, slow side, frustration, tension, you get a lot of tension and uh, you need to get to know about your results. The site will be telling about uh, website not found, website uh, forbidden, internal server error, it cannot be found, please try again later or the browser loading bar will keep round, round, rotating, 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 rotating. 
and uh, with great difficulty you spend time and after one hour you will go and see and check it and uh, you will finally uh, get to know about your result. And if you check out the same website after three or after one week or ten days, the site will be super fast, the ultimate fast, and you will be wondering, is it the same site which was, uh, which I accessed ten days back? Yes, it is the same site. Um, the reason why the sites, those sites behave in that way is uh, they are not or they have not planned for the uh, high capacity, high capacity or high volume traffic. Okay, uh, majority of the time the site does not get any traffic only during the results. And for a university to spend, uh, let's say university has around one lakh students, and uh, if one lakh students hit the same server at same time at uh, at same time, irrespective of whatever high powerful server you keep, it has an upper bound. Okay. University. Yes, Priyank, I will tell you the scaling up and scaling down. I'll just, I'm just coming to that point. Okay, university site. Um, server. Let's say it can serve 10,000 requests. Any number less than 10,000 is fine. Okay. During 100, uh, during 100, Site super fast. When it comes to 6,000 to 7,000 concurrent acceptable slow. It will be slow, but acceptable. It is fine. Uh, uh, it won't be as competitive. And as you need the, as you come nearly around the numbers of 8,000, 9,000, 10,000, what happens? Website not found, 404 not found, 403 forbidden, 500 internal server error, 500 internal server error due to internal processes, all those things come in. Why the server is designed only to handle 10,000. Any number beyond that will be gone. For university, it's fine. See, assuming you are running a website like a Flipkart or an eBay or any other shopping thing. So say your um, website is designed to load only uh, only to cater 10,000 requests or 10,000 users and you get customer base of nearly 15,000 to 20,000 and you will be serving only the 10,000 and the additional 5,000 to 10,000 or whatever the additional thing are lost or they are not given access to the site which means you have lost customers, which means you have lost business, and which means by extension you have lost your profits, money, etc. Everything, everything is lost. Okay? So this is the initial motivation. Now let's get back to the university side. Okay? What can university do? Okay? If I am the IT head, uh, okay, before that, even before that, uh, universities will be typically running their own hardware and uh, but um, actually we used to get site not found, site temporarily uh, uh, unavailable even during non result publication means that could be due to um, power problems, electricity problems, bandwidth, network uh, 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 operating system patches, software upgrade, site uh, modification, uh, somebody uh, um, um, somebody has misconfigured the network routers. All those things are there. Okay, uh, I the um, I am I am the infrastructure head of infrastructure for the uh, university, and the university chancellor calls me and saying that I will say uh, on day one what happened. The site was down for nearly two hours. What happened at the time? It was operating system fault. Sir. Second time, hardware problems. Sir. Third time. Software problems, the fourth day, firmware problem, all these problems are there. And this is because you run your own server. And uh, bringing back the first idea of instead of running your own server, come to the hosting provider, yes. 
So, uh, one fine day, the chancellor gets irritated about all the excuses which the IT department says. Just leave off all your hardware. Just put it aside. Take the website, put it in the hosting provider's portal. That's it. So, what happened? All the hardware problem, software problem, network problem, bandwidth, etc. All those are eliminated. All those are eliminated. And instead of they managing, they manage. Instead of they paying, the salary to the administrators, the uh, network administrators, the sales administrators, they will be paying to the hosting company. And hosting company will take care of the sites, health, etc., etc., etc. And now here, what happens? Again, the same problem, except that it is uh, not happening in your premise. So the site will be super fast for 100, 100 people. Now it is running in hosting. Now running in hosted for 100, super, 6,000 to 7,000 acceptable, 8,000 little more slow, 9,000 even more slow, 10,000 slow, and more than that, 400, 403, 500, etc. Uh, what really happens? It is the same site, it is the same application, it is everything is the same, except that you, uh, except that you don't see the server. You just, uh, you just so, don't see the server physically in your province. It is somewhere else. Uh, which has been running within, uh, in, a, in a big data center, in a big data uh, uh, data store, data uh, server uh, server form. Okay. Uh, even then, you will get the problems of 400, 403, 500, etc., 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 etc. And now the chancellor comes to the IT department and says, "You told that the server will be fine if we put it in hosting, but still." Uh, I had complaints from the students that the website not found all those problems were there. What had happened? What is the real thing which happened? It is uh, the IT department considered that moving from our servers to the hosting provider servers will be faster. Yes, it was faster. Yes. But the scale, the capacity of the servers was very, 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 very limited or it had the bandwidth. And now a new guy comes in. It says, I have the power of cloud. I, ha I exactly know how I could solve your problem with cloud. Okay? What really happens in cloud? What can really be done with the cloud? You could say, if my server capacity is less than, uh, uh, so if the capacity is more than 90% for last 30 minutes. So what does this point mean? If my, if my server capacity is more than 90% for last 30 minutes, means the server is running at nearly around 8,000 to 9,000, okay? It is continuously for 8,000 to 9,000 and you expect it to rise. So what will happen? Serv you will have something called a server count. The server count will be 1 and if the uh, serv if my server capacity is more than 90% for last 10 minutes, you will increment, you will make the server count to 2. What happens suddenly? What happens then? The server capacity will be dropped by as it is 90 for last 30 minutes and now the server count has become 2, meaning your website will be served from 2 servers instead of 1 server and the capacity will be 45 all of a sudden. And this can also continue if with the server count of 2 and the with 90% bring one more server. So which means that the server count will become 30 and it will become 30. 90% with 3 servers, 90 divided by 3 become 30%. You can keep adding these servers. That is, these servers can be made to scale at very, 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 uh, you can literally type in the equation of what can be done with the cloud and what can be made with terms of a load. Uh, or uh, handling the capacity based on the load is one type. There are several other 
uh, types or uh, several other uh, parameters also you would consider um, to making making the server or determining the server count. Okay, um, the concept of increasing your capacity, anticipating or based on the evaluation of the load is scaling. That is, when uh, for 10,000 users have one server, for 30,000 users have three servers, for 50,000 users five servers. So this concept is called scaling and when this happens automatically, that is when you automate these servers based on the network parameters or computing parameters or um, processing parameters, CPU load, etc., it becomes auto scaling. So the same problem of what happened here. So until 10,000, until you could say that it is 8,000. So until 8,000 users, the server count will be one, okay? With 10,000 servers, server count will be two, okay? And this will continue for 20,000, for 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, etc. You keep adding, okay? More and more servers will be done, which means the site will be still faster as there is more computing power to work. And uh, with this, I think I got a, uh, but increasing the server count will also require host my site into new servers as well. Exactly. Uh, very good question, Pray. Yes, increasing the server count will also require host my server. Yes. Uh, Assuming you ha you were running the same server, same uh, same website from your hardware which is running from your office, okay? You were getting 8,000 customers, fine. 9,000 users, fine. 10,000 users, fine. On the event of 10,000 users, will you go to your, uh, uh, if you are in Bangalore, you'll go to SP Road or you'll go to uh, any other computer shop, buy the server, install it, keep running? Is it possible? Is it really? Yeah, is it practical? No, no. You cannot. You cannot have servers uh, at your disposal. No, I need servers right now in another five minutes. Nobody in this world, other than the cloud providers, can uh, can offer you a server in another five minutes by installing your installing your operating system, installing the platform, installing the application, setting up the network parameters, uh, setting up the firewall rules, etc. That's not at all possible. But cloud makes it possible. Okay. Uh, in hosting, you cannot do that. Yeah, it is very, 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 very difficult to do that in the hosting. I told the example of you are making it running in your own hardware, own hardware or hosting provider. Okay. Once you are done with the hosting provider, hosting provider also you cannot instantly tell that uh, make your uh, additional server. Put it uh, instead of one server, put it with two servers and. Uh, keep my website smooth uh, in a smooth operation. No, that's not possible. That's the reason why cloud has this. Okay. Um, uh, there are other parameters where you would set up like at any point in time, I need two servers at any point in time, two servers irrespective of whatever the load. Even the load will be less than 1% on two servers. No, there, there are business cases, or the business requirements which says two servers. Okay. Based on the load increment, if the server CPU load is 80% and more for uh, for 30 minutes, server count plus plus. Okay, just using the terminology. So this will be you will be doing this. So when yeah, so when you come up with a very big number of these many users, you would have been something around 20 servers. Okay, I'm just uh, I'm just uh, making up numbers. Okay. So this number, uh, um, you would scale up more, that is you would spawn more of your servers to cater your site, okay? Yeah, or you, you'll be having the server count. Once the uh, saturation point hits, uh, uh, let's say that if it is still 5,000, if, if, if it is still 50 lakhs or 5 lakhs visitors, you have 20 counts. You could also give an upper bound of if it is uh, uh, 
um, have two servers at any point in time for CPU load of more than 30 minutes, server count plus plus until 10 servers or 20 servers, etc. So 10 servers. This is the upper bound what you tell for yourself. Uh, uh, say you have a beautiful site and uh, it gets a lot and lot of traffic. If you leave it to the scaling, uh, the uh, the scaler uh, will continue scaling up more and more and more and more. In the instance, you might end up with 20, uh, 2,000 servers running to chatter your site. Okay, uh, 2,000 servers, and which means that you will be paying at least $2,000 per hour. Uh, per hour. So each server, $1 per hour, which means $2,000, $2, and that is the amount of spend. So you need an upper cap as well. So that's why you will tell until 10 servers. I think uh, add one to the server, the server preparation latency time, how much time will be less. Uh, maximum time what we tell in terms of our consulting is 5 minutes. 5 minutes is the time which will be taken for you to bring in new, new missions. 5 minutes is uh, the safe guess or the safe thing which we can say. Uh, that is so less time is required for you to bring in more missions. Uh, this is scaling up. We could also scale down. So, if my CPU, if my average CPU, everything is average, okay. If my average CPU is less than 5% for 1 hour, uh, server count minus minus. So this one, this is this is be happy. So you will say you will decrement the server count until you come to two servers and leave it. So this process of evaluating how much of computing power you require to cater your application based on the need is called as auto scale. Uh, how the clouds pay as you go um, comes into this picture. Okay. As I earlier told about, you need two servers. Let's say it be server A. Server. Okay. Let me bring in X. Let's say this as server 1. This is server We have server 3, 4, 5, 6, and till 20. Okay. Server 1 will be running, the, uh, let's say this is, in fact, this is hover. This is hover 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. This is the time. And just a second. Okay. Uh, let's say you have server 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Okay. Uh, this is our, sorry. So, 10 hours. This server will be running, yes. For hour 2, it will be running. Hour 3, it is running, etc. So, in short, you will be requiring, this server will be running for the 10 amount of time. And, uh, First, and one server two and server three will be running, and server uh, this could be running for only four hours. These servers. And these servers would be running only for two hours. And this will be running for only one hour. So what end result, what happened? This is running for 10 hours. This is running for 10 hours. This is running for... 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, this is 2, 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 four. 20 servers is a big number, so I ended up with 5, okay, so this, what, what happened, so the sum of 83, so you will be just paying 83 
hours that is assuming if it is a just 83 dollar 83 that is 1 dollar an hour you would just be paying so assuming uh, the auto scale has somehow put it uh, put s and s here s here s here what happens this is run this would have been running for 4 hours uh, this would be running for 6 hours this will running for 6 hours and you will just pay for 87 hours and uh, you will be just paying 87 dollars so assuming if you had, uh, yeah, you would never have enough money to buy 20 servers and accessing it, uh, scaling it based on the load, scaling it based on the network, scaling it based on your required demand will be a really, really, really nightmare. And cloud makes it possible. That's essentially the key takeaway here. And uh, this is a very, very critical or very, very important milestone which we have covered so far. And uh, I would, uh, I am open to questions even for nearly around 25 to 30 minutes I can spend time at this point in time. Once you are clear with these concepts and we will be building more on these, uh, building more from these concepts. Okay, uh, Priyank, uh, uh, Wilburn, okay, Shubhakar, uh, I am open for questions and uh, um, Narsima, you can unmute them if they want, if they want to talk. Clear. It's no problem. Yeah. No problem. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. What shall we take? What's your question? No question. Oh, that's great. I expected there to be a lot of questions here, and uh, looks like we have really good uh, set of smart uh, students here. Uh, um, the typical questions: What happened? What comes out here is uh, um, how can we uh, trust the billing? How will we really know uh, the server is running or not? Whether we can trust the cloud provider? Whether the they, they can say that server was running for 20 hours, and but it was really running only for two hours. How will we really uh, uh, make up on this? No. Uh, uh, just because I tell the example of postpaid, and people will tell um, uh, the um, the telephone operator, the mobile phone operator guys tell that they will be just paying for uh, paying 500 rupees a month. You get these these things, and later on, only after the month generation, I get bill of nearly 2,300. And when I go back and ask them, they'll be saying this tax, that tax. No, this is an add-on. These things are not coming. All those things. No. Um, they don't uh, say that uh, mandatory fees, you need to pay 10,000 rupees, nothing. You really need to trust the cloud guys. That's, 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 that's much I could say that. Uh, every, every single, so every single, uh, I would try to get access for the cloud bills if possible. I would explain you what, how the things are being documented so clearly. They will, he also tell that uh, the server ID, where it is running, how it was running, how much of bandwidth it was serving, and from uh, which area uh, the bandwidth, the network out bandwidth uh, was being charged. Uh, it is so crystal clear, crystal, uh, crystal clear, you get the details to very, 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 uh, uh, what is it, you will be astonished by seeing those things. There are so much. They are so much detailed, and uh, once you see that bill, you will not get that question of whether they will be cheating you or nothing. People will say, uh, they have my credit card details, and uh, how can I trust them? How can I really uh, um, uh, really sleep uh, uh, peacefully as they have the credit card? No, uh, the companies which run cloud are not uh, the companies which are next to you or the companies which cheat. Microsoft, Amazon, Google, uh, Rackspace, VMware, they are all the big players for nearly uh, 30 years. And 30 years they have done computing based on various things. And uh, when they take a credit card, uh, uh, there is a small, uh, I accept these terms and conditions and there are a list of things what they do. We generally don't ready, uh, uh, we just uh, do the tick mark of by clicking here, I accept the term. We never read the terms and conditions. But these terms and conditions are very clear, very, very clear. And um, 
you need not worry about the payment you need not worry about the credit card charges etc 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 as it is being credit card you can revert back the payment of any time and you could start a file or you can start a case saying that this payment is not being paid all those things are there so this is one thing in terms of billing is concerned the trustworthy and uh, i had an opportunity to attend uh, one of the cloud conferences in india and uh, a uh, person is very very uh, he is a very good ibm he is uh, from ibm cloud and he is saying nowadays the only thing which is missing in the security is the trustworthiness okay you the everything is there in place and you just need to trust the person trust the company uh, apart from that everything is fine okay uh, we had little bit of side track okay moving on okay i told about cloud i told about uh, uh lot of things about cloud why do you need what is the problem what is the problem it solves what is the problem it cannot solve no i didn't tell about what the problem it cannot solve etc okay um i yeah we have a question how they charge the bandwidth they manage this is managed by isp yes very good um the bandwidth uh, is managed by isp but the amount of volume the amount of data transferred from that website or the that computing instance is what they call it as bandwidth how bandwidth it's uh, let's assume you download a 6 gb file from your uh, website from azure they will charge for 6 gb out so that is what they call it the bandwidth my apologies for not uh, explaining this in first thing i should have started with this okay bandwidth that's how they call uh, they will bill you not your customer okay it's your site and your customer has downloaded that data from your website so you will be charged for the computing plus billing okay good type of cloud offering uh public cloud private cloud hybrid cloud there is one more thing called as community cloud i will also explain about that okay uh public cloud is something you get access for everybody it is in general it is an access for everybody you a person from kenya a person from new zealand a person from st peter's nairobi a person from a company from brazil a, per, a, a company from germany anybody anybody can uh, can get access to the cloud as long as they put their credit card and they pay their bills as long as uh, they are ready to those things will be fine public cloud is one i told about the vision from the customers and other from the provision that is uh, you can you are uh, welcome to take their services and the other way uh, you are all they are, yeah you you can that is the company attracts all provides the same set of massive resources for everybody for the cloud um uh, a, a person from uh, uh uk uh, peter can run an 10000 servers from uh, azure website azure data center and another person jack from uh, brazil can operate use the same data center to run his 200 server site etc meaning um, a massive data center which has millions of servers will be sharing the uh, resources into that okay uh, you will be given specific sls of the server will be up by 99% up and running meaning uh, uh, you have a rack and the first server in the rack will be yours and second server will be somebody from sri lanka and third rack will be somebody from singapore etc 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 it is dynamic i mean uh, assuming um, those servers will be in auto scaling it will be running for this server next server etc and the third server it may be somebody else from china etc so it is very very dynamic and very very changing uh, very very dynamic in nature and uh, yeah, everybody will be given uh, access to that so this is private cloud you know you really need to you really don't need anything other than your credit card to get access to the public cloud it is open for everybody uh, you need to understand you need to accept that um, your site your competitor site your super competitor site everybody will be you running in the same you they may be running in the same rack also okay 
Windows Azure, Amazon Web Services, Google App Engine or the uh, major players or the big players in the field of public cloud. Okay. Private cloud. All the all the stories what is told so far from auto scaling, the hosting problem, the uh, well, literal hard, uh, the physical hardware problem, everything. All those things, all those things uh, can be solved by public cloud. When you take a small portion of the public cloud, put it in your office and run it as a private cloud. That is uh, when you run it, that becomes a private cloud. Again, it brings in the problem of power, network, latency, etc., etc. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, all it brings the same problem of running the physical, except that the hardware capabilities, the server capabilities inside the private cloud will offer you the power of auto scaling and um, um, scale based computing or uh, data intensive computing. All those things, all those will be powered inside you. Uh, private cloud actually, if you see, Azure Appliance is one of the private cloud, Azure Appliance is one of the private cloud offerings. Uh, appliance is actually a big lorry container, okay? You just the uh, containers which you see, which you uh, see in ships and trains, the container, when you order an Azure uh, Appliance, what happens is that you will see a lorry into your office. What happens? That is a very big lorry, okay? It will have exactly three ports. One for network, one for cooling, one for power. That's it. Finish. And inside that lorry, the inside that container, it will host nearly around uh, hundreds and nearly hundreds or thousands of servers. And you will be given a laptop to access the individual health of each instance. Okay. And uh, the applications which you have already written for the public cloud, you can take it and uh, run it, you can put it in private cloud and it can run. I think uh, there is still a little bit of uh, code uh, change or other things which are required to be done, but uh, that is essentially private cloud, okay? Buying a private cloud is not that easy. So assuming you need to buy an Azure Appliance, we will be calling uh, Steve Balban of Microsoft and you need to get his approval and then he will approve the appliance. If not, every, every single company can buy. It's first of all costly. And second thing is that you need a real case to why you need a uh, private cloud. Okay. Um, it's running the same cloud data center in your province. And it is used in few domains where data is need to be critical. Uh, you have a lot of banks in India like SBI, HDFC, ICICI, etc. Okay. Uh, I don't know about how they operate, but banks have a... Uh, legislative or jurisdictive restriction that you the bank's data must be in your own geographic territory. Okay, uh, say uh, a bank in running in India and has oper uh, has branches all over India must keep the um, servers, the data about the account holders, data about transactions, everything inside India. And you cannot take us uh, inside India. Uh, we discussed about having our own um, our own hardware versus hosting providers. The bank cannot uh, talk to a big hosting provider which is running out of Singapore to keep or to store all the data out of Singapore data center. No, that is not possible. And government of India, Reserve Bank of India, might uh, stop the bank's operation and would be the bank would be uh, um, will be closed or shut down. So those problems are there. This is with the bank and even the little bit of healthcare data is also supposed to be in its own land, its own geographic territory. Um, your data center can operate out of, that is, if you're running a bank and you're from India and you're an Indian citizen serving for Indian citizens, you could keep the data center even in Andaman Nicobar. You cannot take it little bit ahead and put it in Singapore, no, because uh, of the geographic territory. So those things are there. Uh, uh, so your operations are really big. You are ready to, you are readily interested to uh, migrate your applications to cloud. But as uh, there are no data centers in India, uh, it is only in China, Singapore, Ireland, uh, Texas, uh, California. Um, there are two more places. Okay, there are totally four locations in USA. One in two in Europe. 
two in Asia Pacific for a sure. Right? Uh, you cannot uh, put it in Singapore. Uh, no. Uh, so what happens? You may call Kiobama. You may tell that uh, I am running a bank. This is a problem. I need cloud. Cloud will solve the thing. But I am not supposed to put my data in in any of your data centers which are running in Singapore. If it be possible, I be if possible, if you could construct a new data center in India, I would be happy to take it. And Kiobama will say no. Uh, at at this time, yeah, we don't have any plow plow plans of putting a new data center in India. For so and so reasons, so 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 so, etc. etc. So in that case, uh, I I would like to have an Azure plane. Yes, there will be lorry sent to your uh, office. Just connect it with the people and uh, set up your application and moni monitor the applications from that laptop. Yes, that is that is private cloud. The only thing what you do in the public cloud, you will do it in the private cloud. Except that that is your cloud and you you only you use that cloud. So this is private cloud. Hybrid so mixing and matching. Okay, uh, hybrid means uh, a mix of two, a mix of VM, mix of whatever. Uh, the same story, public cloud, the private cloud. Uh, I am still the same bank on, bank guy. I will be running the information about the bank, like when it was started, when it was closed, etc. Uh, healthcare data. Oh, okay, uh, bank. Uh, enough of bank. Let's go to healthcare. Healthcare details about diseases. Details about the patients, details about the uh, healthcare domains, uh, customers, those critical data alone, I can keep it in private data cloud. That is private cloud. And all the operations like billing operations, the cost of the medicine, the medicines, etc., all those details, I can put it in public cloud. And the critical data alone can be in private cloud, and non critical data can be pushed to public cloud. When you do these kind of operations, when you mix and match private cloud and public cloud, you end up with hybrid cloud. This is one scenario where you will be getting access to hybrid cloud. And the other area where you will see hybrid cloud is the infrastructure spill. Okay, infrastructure spill out. Okay, spilling out is uh, something you happen to access. Uh, you already have 10 servers, uh, be whether, whether it is a private cloud or your own your own uh, physical hardware servers, you just have 10 servers, okay? Uh, uh, for any point in time, you are fine with that 10 servers. All your customers can be served from that 10 physical servers. Uh, on the, the 10 servers can solve up to 10 lakh customers. So when you get uh, more than 10 lakh, you could connect or uh, internally establish a connection or internally extend your data center uh, uh, servers and the 11th server, the 12th server and 13th server, etc., 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 those will be running in public cloud. You could run it in Amazon, or you could run it in Azure and connect them. So the same application will be extended to, hybrid, extended to uh, public cloud from your private cloud or your physical server. This, all these things are called as infrastructure spillage. And you will spill over infrastructure spillover, and um, you would make use of both private cloud both and uh, public cloud to solve the problems. These are hybrid solutions. So here in this example, I have taken uh, uh, Azure Appliance plus Windows Azure will make you a, private, a hybrid cloud. Why go to the cloud? Okay, I will come to this slide after this. Community cloud is what I had missed it earlier. Community cloud, a collaborative effort uh, as uh, Microsoft Azure as well as Amazon Web Services are told that there won't be any uh, data centers at, at, at this time. Uh, what can the banks do? The banks, IT teams, they all can form together, build a cloud data center for themselves and only they will be using. Say there are 10 banks which join together and use that cloud. Only they will be served. The cloud is still in inside India. Uh, the cloud is governed as it is, as the cloud is built by the same domain specific people, that is the banking people. They will be taking care of all the norms of 
the bank, what banks' data centers should follow, banks' data should follow, etc. All those things will be taken care. And uh, you or me who have a shopping uh, online shopping website cannot go to the community cloud of bank and ask. No, they will just kick you off. It is just for them. It is just only for them. So that is called as a community cloud. So these are the types of cloud offerings. Private cloud, public cloud, hybrid cloud, community cloud. Hope uh, this was uh, e, um, the examples what I gave was fine. So how about a little bit check of, um, of your understanding if you have any doubts, etc. Good question, Priyank. I think I answered the same question, right? Yes, I, uh, yes, that would be the same traditional approach, but uh, you uh, you have no other go other than buying the private cloud as uh, you have external problems which will cut you off, which will cut you off uh, from using the public cloud. Okay? So, Wilburn, Priyank, Ankit, is that fine? Uh, Naveen, but uh, one question, uh, in case yes. of uh, private cloud, mm. so uh, mm, this uh, cloud company will be putting their uh, servers and the premises of um, those particular organization, right? Yes. So uh, would would that not be a loss to the cloud company, uh, hosting company, because they are, put, they are putting all the servers, uh, minimum number of servers in the, uh, into the organization's premises and uh, and the the company is paying for uh, for their use only. Other time yes, right. the servers will yes. Other time the servers will be will not be in use and this will be lost yes. company. Lost company. Yes, very good question. Very good question. We really don't know how they manage the data center operation. Okay, I will give you an example of uh, a la carte versus buffet. Okay, a la carte means you go to a hotel and order one Chinese soup and buy masala dosa and then go again for an Italian dessert, etc. You take each thing. And buffet is something you pay a little bit more money. That is, you will pay nearly 500 or 600 and you get access for all the uh, all the dishes in their hotel menu. Maybe you will get for everything. Okay, which means that uh, you are you will not eat up the entire. Uh, entire, uh, that is, uh, although a buffet is considered to be unlimited, uh, you have a limited uh, stomach, uh, you have limited tummy, which can only consume so much, so much of it. And it is the same for everybody, uh, which means that if everybody wants ice, wants ice cream, if the ice cream gets over, they will just refill the ice cream alone. Uh, um, uh, so that is the analogy what I could give it for the server, for the data center. Yes, they have provision for ten or millions of customers, and uh, they might turn on the entire operations of data center a million by million. They would have internally separated. Uh, they have ten million means uh, um, uh, uh, ten or one percent. They would they would have split up that million into hundred hundreds of smaller units. They will turn on unit by unit by unit based on the consumption, and uh, just the same example of. What I told about if you have 10 servers, uh, you will just, if you need 10 servers, you turn on 10 servers. If you don't need, uh, you will turn off uh, 8 servers and just uh, you will be fine with 2 servers. Maybe they would be doing at the same thing. Uh, they would be scaling at the level of thousands of servers at a time. If the server capacity is continuously increasing, turn on 10,000 10, servers, turn on 10,000 servers, 10,000 servers. Uh, I think that is how they will, they will also be doing that operation. But one thing what you are assured is, you would be given capacity instantaneously. They will take care of that. Uh, we really don't know how they do it, but they are capable of doing and they are doing it for nearly three years. Very good question again. I really appreciate the uh, way you do it. Okay. Uh, more questions? Okay, so what shall we, uh, more questions? Okay, 
Mohit, please. I guess you are fine, Priyank. What about Tanket? What about Gilbert? Shubhakar? Any questions so far? Or you guys need a break for five to ten minutes now, or shall we take it? Uh, th uh, this is a uh, this is a milestone kind of a thing. Uh, from now on, there will be a uh, different topic. Uh, the topic alignment will be a little different. Okay, what shall, what shall I do is, I'll just take uh, one more slide, which will be nearly 10 to 15 minutes, and from then we'll take a break. Okay? Okay. Why go to cloud? Uh, this graph is indeed... Uh, 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 you go for any cloud uh, talk or any cloud conference or anything with the cloud, this graph will be there. Okay. Uh, this, in this red color line is the actual demand. Okay. Before that, I'll come to this blue line. Okay. Uh, this means you will buy 100 servers and uh, your operations will be running. So this, assume that this is the capacity for 100 servers in your data center or inside your organization. And the actual demand is the red line, okay? The, uh, at one point in time, you send there would be more customers and you buy 100 more servers. So this marks 200 servers and this marks 100 servers, okay? Uh, your load increases and from here, uh, your load is very, very, <coughs> unpredictable so that's why you have a uh, the load is rising but you don't know uh, you don't know at what rate it is rising you really don't know before buying of you'll get load or not here you have anticipated there be high in load and you have provision 100 more servers this green line green arrow mark indicates the infrastructure what you have wasted yes right you have provision for 200 servers. 200 servers might uh, solve nearly 20, uh, can serve nearly around 20 million concurrent accesses. But here you have only less than less than uh, 10 million concurrent accesses. So 100 servers are wasted here. And again, you uh, your load raises and and it is here. And uh, leave off this space and you see it in a big way here. Uh, you have anticipated more, that is from 20 million customers to 30 million customers, but you have anticipated a little late. Okay, uh, this is 200 servers and this is 300 servers, but whereas you are uh, 21 millionth customer is already here, which means that uh, he, the customer actual load is raising, but you have provisioned your servers only here. Okay. Uh, so this is the opportunity lost, or uh, these are the customers. Uh, these are the customers whom you were not able to serve because of the infrastructure limitation. This same graph can be uh, extrapolated to any point in time. The load keeps raising, and here, and here we see the yellow line. Blue line is a large capital expenditure. That is, you buy more and more servers in hundreds or tens or thousands. This yellow line is provisioning with the cloud. Okay, uh, as I ex uh, explained you about uh, the cloud, uh, you could align your uh, uh, required server based on the load. Um, here, if you see, uh, um, the yellow line will be very, very, very uh, in uh, in context or uh, very aligned to the red line. The red line is the actual demand, and the yellow line is the cloud storage, which means uh, here you have scaled up and here you have scaled down. Here you have scaled up, here you have scaled down. Here you have scaled up with respect to with very, very aligned to the actual demand. And you have no lost customers because yellow line goes here. So this is the real motivation of why you need, uh, why what a cloud can solve over uh, traditional uh, um, buying servers in thousands and installing them. There might be over provisioning, there might be under provisioning. At any point in time, you should not, you don't need to over provision, meaning over provision is allocating more computing resource than what you really need. Under provisioning is allocating less uh, computing power uh, than what you really need. Uh, cloud helps you check the 
over provisioning and under provisioning and keep it really aligning to what uh, how, uh, exactly how much of capacity you need. So this one slide, uh, explain this slide required lot of uh, prior theory and we could mark it as one session's completion of why do we need to go to cloud. Um, so we can have a break for uh, 10 to 15 minutes uh, if, after, if we don't have any questions. I am open for questions and uh, if the questions could be any, any topic, anything so far what I have covered. The problems, what if, uh, will the cloud support this, uh, what is your, uh, so far whatever you have understood with the cloud or if you have any ambiguity, you could uh, throw it on me right now. So, any questions? What are the cons of using cloud? Wow, uh, uh, it avoids you, uh, instead of buying 100 servers, you could buy one server one by one without any problem. Uh, there is, you, you won't get into a situation of over provisioning or under provisioning. If you have capacity only for uh, 1 million users, 1 million users can be served by uh, say 20, 20 servers, you just need to buy 20 servers. If your uh, load is 1 million plus 1,000, you would buy only one more server. But traditionally, enterprises buy in hundreds of, hundreds of servers. That's how they operate. Um, you could all, uh, you could get out of that. Auto scaling is the real need. So these are the cons, I could say. I have been telling about cons right from the beginning of the class. The every point what I told is really the advantage of cloud, right? From running your server from 12 noon to 3, 3 p.m., uh, running your payroll only in one day, uh, all those sort of things are forms, right? Uh, Shubhakar, was that uh, um, explanation satisfactory or you want me to go a little bit ahead? Okay, good. Okay, guys, uh, now the time is exactly 11.32 in my watch. We will meet back by 11.45. How about that? Fine, right?